you're looking for some straight-up marketing advice that's super chilled and also a bit of a laugh, then grab yourself a drink and get ready for Marketing and Margaritas, a podcast that makes marketing entertaining. Brought to you by Rebel Nation, direct from regional Queensland. Hello and welcome to Marketing and Margaritas. Today's episode is how we hired our amazing VA, our virtual assistant. Yes, so I get asked this all the time about how we actually found Ara, who is the name of our VA. Um, But basically, when I first bought the agency, I wanted to um, have someone that would be able to do the sort of more process task for admin and accounts, etc. Obviously, you were working with Mm -hmm. me, but you only had so much hours because for some reason you want to be around your children all the time. (laughs) And so to make best use of your time because you handle a lot of the accounts and admin at work, we wanted to get someone who would... um, yeah, take care of the process driven stuff that really didn't need you. The lower level admin and account stuff. It's really important stuff that has to happen day in oh, and day out. So and essential. Very time consuming and a lot of it. And most business owners themselves would be like, yeah, that's a lot. And it's so, it's a lot of it too is stuff that needs to be done in a really timely fashion as well. Yeah. So it's sort of like, you know, if you're getting caught up or you're doing Marcom stuff or you weren't there, mm. it could have really, you know, put a, a um, what do you call it, a stop on, on for other people being able to do the work they needed to do sort of thing. So that's why we wanted to get Ara. Yes. Um, So what is a virtual assistant? Well, a virtual assistant is pretty much for us and and how we've structured Ara's role um, is an admin assistant that just works remotely. She works virtually. Um, What does she do for us? It pretty much depends on the skill set of who you're hiring and we'll go through that to how we worked out the process. But like we just said, any any admin process-driven tasks, so repetitive data entry, um, any job setting up. Um, she handles emails as well. She's a very good communicator. So um, we just systemized as much as we could when give we her templates and everything yeah. we could, etc. Yeah, we did that for not just for our um, working remotely, but also for how we did stuff internally for the business. Just and, make it more streamlined in general. Yeah, yeah and that's so. really come in handy. Yeah, so I think, um, and like we went with our like being in the Philippines and stuff mm-hmm. because the time difference isn't too bad. No, it's quite similar to ours. I it's think like she's two hours two behind hours us. Yeah. yeah. Um, so she's pretty much on during the day when we're on so we can actually talk with each other and everything. Yeah. And then, yeah, just doing like all of those inputting of bills and sending invoices and setting, setting up, up jobs. New jobs. Yeah. I don't know. She does a bunch of stuff though, man. Time like she sheets, does, reporting. Yes. All of that are reporting. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. All of our retainer trackers every single week, all of them. Yeah. Yes. She does a very good job. She even gets tasked with typing up Jade's notes and somehow manages to do a great job there, I believe. <laughs> She's pretty good. <laughs> you can speak Macaulay's, but she can read Macaulay's. Yes. That's a whole other language again. So <laughs> no, Ara is pretty much indispensable when it comes to the organization I think we owe her a lot for sure yeah we've been lucky to have her with the business for three years four years now four Four. yeah 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 so basically what happened was that we um when we first started we did try it with someone else so we went through this process um I think it was in the first year of actually having the agency and they didn't quite work out after the probation period or whatever and so we closed her off but then we're like let's try again and then second time we struck gold and she's been with us ever since sort of thing so and I know for me like I said at the start I get asked this all the time of like how do you find someone like Ara to us is so integral to the organization. Like she's literally on our website, which she loves as well. And <laughs> I think it's so cute. I love when she comments on like our social, social posts. Media. Yeah. It's just, it's so sweet, man. She's like the nicest person. Um, but yeah, so always I get asked about how we found her. So that's what we wanted to do this episode today. Yeah. Cause well, you had another business mentor when we were, um, in the changeover with Rebel and Out of the Blue that you got the inspiration from. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and their VA was much the same. It's a very important a per, important part of their business as well. So we're not the only small business that does it. It's not a new no. thing to have a virtual assistant. And there is it's just outsourcing work. And the way we've structured it is she's a part of the team. 
Yeah. And that's and people don't have to do it. Like no. I know there's lots of people who have like VAs and stuff like that behind the scenes or that whatever. Are contractors or yeah. Whereas we choose to have like yeah, ours on our website, she deals directly with clients when needed for things. Yeah. Like we're you know, we're more than comfortable having her in that kind of space. But that's also not like immediately from day one too. No. Like that was definitely a process of growing the relationship and stuff too. Make sure you have the right person. And the trust. Like I think, you know, mm. that's kind of the same when you're onboarding anyone. You don't give them the keys to the kingdom the first day. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, um, <laughs> you don't give them the keys to the kingdom. No, I don't. I never do that, especially anyway. not with my own personal passwords. So, all right. how did so, we find her? Okay, so first of all, we worked out what we wanted her to do. So, Lani got the amazing task of writing <laughs> down all of the different things that she was doing and that we thought we could foresee would be great to get done if one of us had time for it someday. Yeah. Um, and then Lani went through and recorded videos, <laughs> um, for the. Uh, it wasn't for everything because the list was massive. I was just looking at it when I was researching oh, this really? episode and I'm like, wow, there's a whole bunch of stuff here we haven't got our own yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, so you did videos for, like, the starting tasks that we knew would be important. So, yep. like, setting up jobs, how to do an invoice, that type of thing. I found videos were a good way of doing it because you could – it's, it's like one-on-one -on -one training essentially that they can pause and replay um, so they can go back and forward. You, When you type something out, it can be a little bit more long-winded or technical and, and pasting in screenshots can get a little bit overwhelming. Yeah, Whereas 100%. stepping someone through in a video can be quite... I guess a they just bit follow more. along with as well. Yeah. I think, you know, like if you say, oh, click this button, click this link, etc., yeah. And you're I like, wait, wait, where, where, is, is. where would yeah. that link be sort of thing? And it's like, oh, it's right there. And whereas, yeah, yeah. on a video, you're like, click this link, yeah. click that. Um, and I just think that, you know, when you work, when you're onboarding anybody, not just mm -hmm. someone who has a different, you know. Working um, remotely. Yeah, yeah, working remotely or even like the language barrier and stuff yeah. like that because, you know, English is her second language. Um, it was having really clear steps, really clear expectations and being really like clear on what we wanted her to do and how to do it. Yeah. So just trying to make things from her perspective. And like I said, with anyone who knew was starting, like everyone does better if they know exactly what you expect from them and, you know, how to actually do that for you. Yeah. So even now when I give her a new task that she hasn't done before, I, it's easier for me to quickly record a video than to write instructions. Yeah, yeah, like, fair enough. Here, here's how you do it. There you go. There it is. And she'd be like, I just had one question. I'm like, oh, I totally forgot to include that. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember recording those first videos? Oh, I remember that was in that little front office at yeah. Brisbane Street. Yeah. Yeah, I actually remember it was like a few jackhammer incidences where I'd have to like stop because someone would start jackhammering in the middle of the video. <laughs> or like right now where we've got trucks reversing with the roadworks across the street. I hope no one else can hear that. It's, it sounds real good. Joy of business. <laughs> okay, so next up, once we were really clear on what we wanted to do and we sort of had our shit sorted, then it was writing a really clear job ad. Guess what's going to be a theme of today? <laughs> clear, clear, clear. Um, so the website we used was onlinejobs.ph, which obviously we'll put the link in the show notes. Um, and so one of the tricks that my mentor gave me is that he said, when you put the job ad up, mm -hmm. in the job ad, ask them to do something specific in their reply as opposed to just saying send your cover letter and resume because a lot of people and again this is not just about working remotely this is like anyone recruitment tip even for my comms which yeah. is like you're a comms person but whatever um people don't pay attention and so if you need someone if part of the job is attention to detail yeah. then you can test that straight off the bat so the thing he recommended to me was that when getting people to apply to put in the job description to write in their subject line, I am your superstar VA. Yeah. So that way when all of the applications came through and we had a bit of a lot of them. Yeah. It was super easy for me because I was like, any that didn't have that as a subject line, you didn't actually pay attention to the job ad. You don't have the attention detail that I need. Delete, 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 delete. Yeah. So that was actually a really useful tip that I awesome. will always remember because I was just like, it just made life so much easier, yeah. but it just made sense too. Yeah. Did, was there a reason we recruited via the Philippines? I'm assuming it was just a budget and a recommendation at that time. Yeah, basically. Yeah, they just came and they were just like, and I, I knew a couple of other people who also had VAs and they were all in the Philippines. Yeah. I know one person who has had a VA over in the US. Yeah. Um, and obviously, like, the price was, was quite different sort of thing. Yeah. And even just... 
um, like the time thing, it actually does Create become a bit of a barrier. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Whereas like like I said, two hours is not that different for most of the chunk that she's on, we're on as well. So it makes life a lot yeah. easier for everyone. And quite often I think Ara gets up early because internet can be an issue sometimes depending on where she is location-wise. Mm. And what's so, happening weather-wise. Yeah, yeah. So, mm. you know, you've got to keep up. The one tricky thing that we've had to – this is just a side note. Probably should save it for the wrap-up. But one Tangent thing – wrap-up <laughs> tip. <laughs> Midway wrap-up tip. We've learned to be lenient with is that um, – and to check the weather because mm. all of a sudden Ara will be off and Jack will be like, I can't get a hold of her. Have you heard from and the next minute we're like ah oh, there's actually a tsunami or a, a, mm. a, an extreme weather warning happening and if they're offline you can't get a message <laughs> saying I can't come to work today it's physically impossible yes we have no power <laughs> although I do like the fact now that our phones we actually have Ara on there so we can actually call and talk to her I think I've used it once and then like have never thought to use it um, again but I like that it's on there at least <laughs> although that's still over the internet so but I think it goes to her actual mobile so we could always but then it depends if the lines and shit are down there too. Yeah. Anyway, we haven't used it um, for that. Okay. So then just like any other job process, the next thing we did was make a shortlist based on resumes. Yes. Um, and I'm just making sure I didn't miss anything. Um, so some things that we really paid attention to was their actual availability. Yeah. So if they already had other jobs, because it is quite common to mm-hmm. do remote work and stuff. And so they might have multiple jobs on the go. And if you know how many hours you want them to have – whether they're actually going to be able to fit you in in the time frame that you would prefer as well. Yeah, if they're so, fitting two jobs into a standard business day and those times that you want them online, that mm, may not be ideal. Or if they're like, I can only do Mondays and Tuesdays, and you're yeah. like, well, Mondays is our accounts days, so if that's all you can do, that's actually not going to suit us, even though it's just a part-time job. Yeah. It still doesn't suit sort of thing. So knowing what, those, um, what the availability and stuff was, and then also uh, doing the salary, salary expectations, so like what you were starting wage was um, your reference checks, that kind of thing. Um, it, yeah, basically just anything like you would normally go through in when hiring someone, you look at the resume and go, do they have the skills that I'm looking for? Yeah. And then you move on to setting up an interview. So we did ours over Skype. There's so many different video meeting platforms and stuff. You could yeah, do I don't even use Skype anymore. No. Like <laughs> now we hook up on Zoom and stuff. But back in the day, it was, yeah, yeah. literally I did a Skype interview with her. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, you just set up your interviews as you would a video interview. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and went through interview questions and stuff. And that's, sorry, that's then when I did the reference check. So, um even though it's over email, the guy that who was mentoring me did say it was still important to do those. Mm-hmm. Um, however, he just said to be aware of the emails, like who you are sending them to and, and who they might be in an organisation sort of thing because it could be like just someone's friend giving them a good yeah. reference just like anyone would do sort of thing. So trying to make sure like the quality of the reference checking and stuff that you were doing, which, again, is something that you do when you're hiring people anyway. Well, if but you're just phoning someone. It could just be their friend versus yeah, it could be their, their mum, you know what I mean? Like you don't actually know sort of thing. So, yes, reference check. Um, and then lastly was about um, hiring, like just choosing someone and going ahead with them. So yeah. we did our onboarding process of, you know, sending through, um, you know, here's your task list, here's the videos on how to do that, yeah. um, you know, do this bit, then we'll check it, do this bit, then we'll check it, all that kind of thing. So having really clear expectations about feedback at the little steps at the start yeah. so there wasn't a whole bunch of things done wrong sort yeah. of thing yeah. um, and then that feedback you know that feedback loop doesn't it becomes a bit more onerous and everything whereas yeah little bits of feedback along the way and we still do that with R and now absolutely like, um, you know I, a little while ago um, identified with her that she was getting some real so the team grew really big yeah. and then we all of a sudden started having um, these inaccuracies kind of coming up in like timesheet entries and stuff and I was like, Ara, this used to not be an issue, but now, like, there's mistakes mistakes nearly every week. Like, what's going on and stuff? And she was like, oh, you know, flicking back and forth, you know, because there's so many and they have to be done in a time certain time frame so we can do the retainer trackers every Monday. Yeah. It was flicking back and forth. She was just trying to go super quick and making mistakes. So we got her a second monitor. Yeah. And that's made such a difference. Yeah. So just like we have in our office. We all have two monitors. That's it. She's now got the dual monitor so she can have the timesheet. She copies it over to Airtable and it's much quicker, but it's also more accurate. So She's also a big part of um, refining our processes now because she does a lot of the legwork on those um, 
really process heavy steps. Like um, this week I was touching base with her. I was setting up a new process for a new team member um, in regards to some reporting. And I actually checked it all with her first. I'm like, this is what I'm going to set up as a template. This is what I'm going to instruct them to do. Is this what you need to do your part of the thing? And she was like, that's not ideal if we change it to this. And, and we negotiated and worked out how to do it best. Because at the end of the day, I've asked her to do this thing. I want to make it as easy and as efficient for her as possible and be mm. doing. So it gets done the way that you want. Yeah. And it works out for yeah everybody. Yeah. Just because she's a VA doesn't mean I want to waste her time or, or have any errors there either. So, yeah, she's become a big part of that. And I think, too, like with Ara, like it did take a little while for her to be able to give us feedback, feedback and feel comfortable sort of I, I don't think that was is potentially a very common circumstance yeah. um, for her family and friends like the relationship that we have with her from what the conversations I've had with her are very different to how others get treated and so at the start it was like we'd be like oh you know how to improve this and she'd be like everything is fine everything is fine yeah whereas like it's now she and she's extremely polite like it's that politeness level has not changed or she's probably the most polite fucking person I've ever spoken to in my life consistently even if I'm losing my shit about something she's so polite the whole time but you know now she'll actually kind of give us feedback and everything too which makes it easier for us because yeah. then we can actually set things up and whatever but and I think it's keeping in mind for her we're a whole business on the other side of a computer on the other side of the world to her like we mm. are so like working remotely even when we did it during COVID mm. and our team was separated like how there's lots of frustrations you're not face to face so you lose the personability with who you're working with so for her there's nine of us on the other side of that computer and then and all her. these expectations mm -hmm. so it's I think that's important to keep in mind to and and for us creating that relationship is how that we've kept her as part of the business and and ensured that she is happy and doing a good job yeah 100 percent. and I think like you know with our like like I said I remember you know asking her, her to send through the photos so we could put her onto the website or whatever yeah. she had no expectation of that like yeah. that was just not something she would ever it's not like, you know, she was kind of sooky and going, oh, I guess I'm not part of the team. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. That was never a thing. That was something, like, yeah. that we brought her on, like, that we wanted to do or whatever. And I just think that it's like anything. When you, you know, treat people well, then they're going to try and give you their best sort of thing. I think we've always had that with her. We hope so. <laughs> well, I think we've got our best. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So wrap up tip. Yes. Is don't be afraid to give it a go. Like with anything, it may go amazingly. You may miss the mark first round and have to keep trying. We did. Personnel, whether they're virtual assistant or in, you know, within your business, recruiting is hard. Yeah. Finding the right fit is hard. <laughs> there is no sure fit. And like, you know, some of those tips, like, you know, what website to go to, putting that thing in your mm -hmm. subject line, um, still doing a reference check, even though it's by email, like those kind of things can definitely help, but nothing is going to be foolproof. Yeah. So jumping and having go is definitely worth it. Um, I had a conversation with Ara after her, um, which was that we were helping her. We, no, no, we were doing a favor for her with the visas yeah. and stuff recently. And um, she was telling me about how for her, she gets asked by her family and friends all of the time, um, how did she get such a good paying job and for so long? Yeah. So she's been with us. She's Her hours started off, I think, at like 20. Yeah, 15, 15 20. 20 a week. Yeah. And then she does like 20. 30 week, now. 30. Yeah. I know things. Um, you know, like we've grown her hours. Um, she was working a few, uh, two different jobs plus us at the start. Then she dropped one of them and now we're her only job because we pay more for that than what she would we, get from other ones sort yeah. of thing. So, you know, even though we don't have to pay her the rate that we do, we keep doing pay bumps for her to show yeah. her that we appreciate her as well. Um, we always give her like a bit of extra cash for Christmas and, and her birthday. birthday. Um, we advanced her salary um, for when COVID happened. Her parents um, had to, I think they lost their jobs or something. Yeah, it was financial and, hardship. Yeah. yeah, and her and her sister were paying their mortgage out for them. So she asked for an advance, which we were like, you know, take however long to pay back. And she was like, no, <laughs> this is my three-month plan and then it'll be paid back. And I'm like, you don't have to be doesn't have to be that quick or that rigid. She was like, no, this is what I'm doing. Like, So, no, you can't have Ara, she's ours. Yeah. Like, I'm sure there are other fabulous uh, virtual assistants but out there. But that relationship so. took time, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. We show her that we appreciate her. She shows, like, you know, obviously she tries to do her best for us, but, like, it's not just treating someone like a contract or anything. Like, yeah. she is 100% a part of the team. Our business would not run as smoothly as what it does if Ara was not there. Yeah. Mm. Pretty much. 
hundred percent. All right. Well, I think that was all to wrap it up. Yes. Make it worth a while from her perspective. She loves us from what Jade says. <laughs> she does. We love her. her. It was so sweet because she was just like, she goes, yeah, I get asked all the time. How did I find this job? Because it's so unusual. I get paid more than people who are like proper skilled, like, not that admin and ad counts isn't skilled, but you know what I mean? Like people who have degrees and stuff, she gets paid more than them. And she's, and she's like, I don't know what to tell them. Like it just, <laughs> I just supplied and it worked out. I'm like, yeah, man, like we just fit each other really well. Like, yeah. Everyone's happy. So if you do have an unsuccessful hire and fire, learn from it, make notes and, and, and re review your system and how, like, I know. I can't remember what we did, but I'm assuming that's what we did. I know we've definitely, we have refined. We've refined our normal hiring process, but I think when we, when we didn't go ahead with our first I think we looked at our expectations and our training and that a little bit clearer. And that's when I definitely did a bit more of those videos for Ara because I Um, think they were more Ara centric. Okay. Um, but yeah, so was a rev- reviewing that process and doing it better. Yeah, and we did better. You always learn. <laughs> All right, I hope you guys got something out of that episode. Um, have a look at what can be systemized and possibly delegated in your business to a virtual assistant. We love ours. I reckon you'd love one too. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for listening to this episode of Marketing and Margaritas. Find more free marketing tips, tricks, and laughs at rebelnation.com.au.